Mr. Notar, Mrs. Riedel, Mr. Cray, Mrs. Sardella, members of the faculty, parents, and students. Welcome to the 2020-2021 National Honor Society induction ceremony. We are gathered here to formally recognize those students who have been selected by the faculty of our school for successfully completing their candidacy and are being inducted as new members of our NHS chapter. For current members and those former members who may be among our guests, we hope this will serve to remind you of the standards of excellence you too are charged with maintaining as members of the nation's oldest, largest, and most prestigious student recognition program. It is at this time that we proclaim to all in attendance that membership in the Edgewood High School's chapter of the National Honor Society has been earned by these candidates through the effective demonstration of the four qualities that serve as standards for the society. Members of the chapter will now review these qualities for the candidates. We begin with scholarship. Scholarship is represented by the color gold. I understand that many of those inducted today have dedicated themselves to their education. Like many, I too have sacrificed my free time in order to prepare for an upcoming exam or to complete a project. To be inducted as a member of the National Honor Society, one has had to have shown a strong effort towards academic throughout their years in Edgewood High School, thus fulfilling the scholarship pillar. A scholar is not someone who is content with what is known, but is rather someone who seeks out the unknown. This is an important trait to have, as it is something you will take with you beyond the walls of Edgewood High School. A student who displays scholarship throughout high school will take the drive they acquired through their scholarly habits with them into college, into their future career. They do this by taking challenging courses, as it is a way to not only become a better student, but become a more well-rounded individual. They do this by researching, as it is a way to not only become a more well-rounded individual, but a more reliable classmate. That's what scholars do, they do. Whether they were sitting in a classroom or attending a virtual lesson from home, they do not let anything inhibit them from reaching their goals. However, in order to reach those academic goals, especially when trying to emerge from a difficult situation or surpass an obstacle, scholars might need to rely on skills aside from studying and researching and asking questions. Some may question why a devotion to scholarship is meaningful. It is meaningful because it shows a devotion to bettering yourself. The scholarship pillar does not stand alone. In order to function as part of a structure, it must stand with the other pillars of leadership, service, and character. By being inducted into NHS, you have proven yourself to be a prominent scholar, but you have also proven yourself to be a leader, a humanitarian, and a doer. The next category is service. Service is represented by the color red. Today, I challenge you to see service as more than an activity of righteousness. Instead, I challenge you to see it as one of the greatest gifts we have the power to give and receive. The power to improve life for all humanity lies in the hands of the people who see the gift in their ability to serve others, serve themselves, and serve the world, which I am confident to say applies to those here today. Service is lifelong something that will travel with you far past the days of high school and youth. It is not simply an act, but rather a calling to enrich the lives around us, even when it means working late or pushing ourselves past a limit. I often find myself with a tremendous urge to discover my purpose, but when I'm in the act of service, it all becomes clear. Think back to a time you served, whether it was as simple as holding the door open for one individual or offering your time to help thousands at a food shelter. The impact that we have on the world is greater than we often realize. However, it never goes unnoticed. To my fellow humanitarians, you are the reason someone is smiling today. You are the reason someone is standing taller. You are the reason that we can live in a world of prosperity and positivity, where possibilities are endless. True service comes from the heart and is spread to the hearts of many others. To serve is the greatest honor we can do for each other, but also the greatest honor we can do for ourselves. We become rich in experience, purpose, and life as we take our opportunity to make the world filled with quality. Looking past this moment, you will often be faced with days that will question your ability to be the difference, but only let it humble you. Allow your heart to beat outward, daring to make this life something more. Serving is smiling in the face of struggle, 
and driving the betterment of others in all scenarios. As we continue to grow a day older, people dedicated to the life of service will never lose the hope and joy of such a gift. In a time and place where there is no greater need, service is the most miraculous power we have. The next category is leadership. Leadership is represented by the color purple. Being a leader doesn't just mean being in charge of something. Being a leader means working with others to reach a common goal. For example, if you're the captain of the basketball team, as a leader, you would want to push your team to win. You want to listen to your teammates' ideas and work with them on how to execute them. A leader should push each player to be the best version of themselves. You want to have the team's best interest in mind and be able to communicate with everyone around you. Communication plays a significant role in being a leader. Being friendly and approachable can help everyone succeed. The leadership role isn't always easy. You need to be willing to make sacrifices so you and your team can succeed. There might be a lot of late nights and early mornings. No one wants to wake up at 6 in the morning to go to the student council meeting or after a long football game bring the freshmen home because they don't have a ride. But a true leader will make that effort and do it with a smile. By doing that, though, you are taking responsibility. Being a leader means you are prompt and set an example for those that look up to you. Being a leader means being the best influence you can be and making good choices. A great leader is someone who motivates you and keeps your spirits high. What makes a great leader is someone who is a good role model and inspires others around them. Leadership can start a large chain reaction of positivity. If you see someone is having a bad day and you make an effort to smile at them or talk them through it, that person is most likely going to do the same and pass on the positive energy. A small bit of leadership and positivity can go a long way. Your influence can cause many worthy outcomes all because you took that step forward. The next category is character. Character is represented by the color white. Character is a strong foundation that makes a person unique. People come into contact with others all around the world, and there are certain individuals that take it upon themselves to absorb information on how to treat that person in that given time. As time passes, these characteristics build up to define people. An individual's identity lies in their character and not in the tangible objects like money or abstract notions, such as power or popularity. Often, a person's character comprises the roots of their lives. You cannot see these qualities at the surface, but much like a par person's character, it helps bring nutrients to the tree for it to grow and mature. There are a variety of exemplary character traits since there are, is a wide spectrum, whether it is being thoughtful or being determined. Character is learned throughout someone's whole life, like the roots slowly absorbing water and nutrients to help it grow. Individuals possess certain characteristics through their life by gaining real life experience in the world to gain more knowledge on their actions. As one grows up in the world and experiences interactions with other people, it can teach them how to be generous and respectful. For example, in the first years of a life, children gain experience in kindergarten by interacting with other children to learn how to share and be respectful. In gaining more knowledge in, real, in the real world, one may go through hardships or failures, but it is how you react that will make you successful. The tree may be beaten down by the relentless wind, but it is the roots that provide patience and stability to keep the tree from falling. Much like character, it may be tested with certain experiences, but people will preserve and learn from the challenges brought on. It is not the failures that define you, it is how you overcome them. For Jeanette Franken, being the first woman in the House of Representatives brought struggles and hardships, but overcoming those obstacles with courage and determination allowed her to help make important decisions in the government. The quality of perseverance allows us to make important changes in individuals' lives, in the community, and around the world. The final category is the keystone and torch. The emblem of the National Honor Society was first described by E.J. Eaton, a member of the First National Council. The emblem of this society is the keystone and flaming torch. The keystone bears at its base letters CSLS, which stand for the four cardinal principles of the organization. Character, scholarship, leadership, and service. 
As the keystone is placed by the builder to hold the perfect arch in perpetual stability, so the structure of our education must be held firm and true to the purposes of life by the virtue represented in those symbols. To bear forward the searching light of truth, to lead that others may follow in light, to keep burning in our school a high ambition for the enduring values of life, and to serve these purpose are, purposes are symbolized in the torch. At this time, will the new inductees step forward and repeat after me? I pledge to myself. Always to seek the light of truth. To hold scholarly habits. To engage in worthy service. And to lead forward in all things. That shall advance the welfare of the school. I'd like to introduce the newest members of the National Honor Society. Please hold your applause until all names have been read. Maya Beatty, Monica Hamilanen, Ian McIntyre, Talia McLaughlin, Caroline Nelson, Grace Patriarco, Taylor Rackett, and Sean Sheldon. And now, please welcome our principal, Mr. Notar, who will offer congratulatory remarks to the new members. Good afternoon. I just want to welcome everyone here today. I do have a few thank yous uh, to start off before I get to the young men and women in front of us being inducted today. I do want to thank uh, Mrs. Sardella, uh, our English teacher, and our National Honor Society advisor for organizing today's event, getting the applications in process, and getting all the information out to the students. So I thank her for all her efforts. Also, our National Honor Society committee members that uh, meet to go over all the criteria and the scoring. And what's neat about that committee is at the end, when the students, uh, when the list of students are determined uh, based upon all the calculations, you would think that they're still in high school because they, that the fun part is when they uh, get to pick names of who they want to call and let the families know. So you would think as teachers, they're being inducted because they get very excited making those phone calls to our families and our students. So thank you for those uh, committee members. Also our staff members that are in attendance, uh, a lot of them had to fill out um, you know, forms and, and, and based upon these students that they had in class on the character, characteristics for National Honor Society. So taking the time and the seriousness behind that uh, to help the committee and Mrs. Sardella out. Also to Mrs. Uh, Nesbitt and her multimedia students that are here today filming this uh, so they can produce a video so family members that aren't in attendance or are not uh, located locally, they'll be able to view that through our social media and we'll get that information to you. I know Mrs. Sardella had mentioned, we had talked about, we usually have a dinner for National Honor Society induction. We're hoping that closer to springtime that things lighten up uh, and to get a little bit better that we'll be able to hold something like that here at the high school and we'll keep you uh, up to date on how that goes. Uh, I do want to say a thank you to you as parents, family members, um, just for raising great young men and women. I truly mean that. Uh, all of you sitting here today have had some impact in their life so far growing up, and you're going to have a lot of impact on their life as they leave Edgewood High School. So I thank you as, as parents, family members, uh, friends, uh, the, the young people being inducted today. Just thank you for everything that you've done and the positive path that you led them down. Um, lastly, <laughs> I just want to thank the students that are standing right now. In a time of COVID, you know, for these students to take the time, the energy, the effort to fill out their application, to document everything, to submit everything, and follow through that process just shows you their determination as a student and how much they care about their academics and how much they care about Edgewood High School. Um, the nice thing is, 
they're underclassmen and I have them all next year. So these definitely standing in front of you are gonna be our school leaders, uh, not only the rest of this year, but I'm gonna lean on them a lot next year, um, you know, when, when leading Edgewood High School and, and getting us through next year as well. But I, I can't speak enough about uh, all the students standing up in front of us. I still remember Talia coming over as an eighth grade and sitting with her in the office for the last period of the day. It's amazing to see them uh, grow up just to be such amazing young men and women uh, that I'm, I'm very, very proud of. And I know your teachers standing around the auditorium that have had you in their class will say the same thing. Uh, I can honestly say when we met as a committee, the, the amount of positive remarks and comments that the staff made about all of you were tremendous. And the same for our current inductees being here today and, and uh, being a part of this ceremony and, and just honoring you being inducted. Um, we have a, a tremendous group of, of young students in here that are gonna be our future leaders, not only in the school, not only in the county, but you know across the whole entire state as they get older. So I thank them for all their efforts. Um, it is actually funny, we were talking before uh, here and, and some of the kids that are here today that are dressed up, they're like, man, this is the first time I've dressed up since last March, um, which is true. Um, but it's amazing how nice they look when they, uh, for, certain, for certain events that we have. So I just thank everybody. It, it's a tremendous honor for you as students being inducted. It means a lot. Um, your determination and how much you truly, truly care about your academics and just being an all-around good person um, and I've always said that academics are important there is no doubt about it but when you leave Edgewood High School if you're a good kind caring person and you care about your family and people around you you're gonna go a long way and, and I believe we have that with all the students in attendance today um, so congratulations so if we can have one more round of applause for these students Directly afterwards, um, uh, we are, uh, if the families do want to take pictures, you're more than welcome. I know we have the flowers up here so you can get pictures of, of your child. I know Mrs. Ms. Fisher wants to get a picture of all the current inductees for a yearbook, so make sure you stick around and she'll direct you on getting a photo with her. Mrs. Sardone, anything else? Very good. Again, thank you, parents and family members, for taking time out of your day. I know it's hard to, to maneuver things in the middle of the day, but I truly appreciate that. And that shows um, the students here how much you do care about them by rearranging your schedule and taking time out to honor this with them as well. So at that, that's a conclusion of today. Congratulations to our students. Um, here at A through L, we'll see you on Monday. Here at Heaven through Z, we'll see you on Tuesday. But thank you everyone for being here today. Thank you.